All right, so we just kind of bent this triangle shape over, first by using distort to lean it, and then warp to bend it. And now I'm just going to use free transform to rotate it down and place it. And that almost matches exactly, which isn't too shabby. All right. So one way to get these kind of clean, complicated shapes is to make sure the colors match and just overlap them, just like you would with cutouts of paper. And then you're not a slave to your reference. You can always customize it, make it your own. All right, so those are the flat shapes of my cat. There's only one thing I might change. I don't like how much white there is in the center. So I'm going to just select this nose shape, and I'm just going to change its color to this chin gray. See how that affects things? Yep, and that kind of balances it a little bit in a way I like. These are the basic requirements. I want to check that I turn off every raster layer. Not delete it, but turn it off. So I turn off my guide layer there, I turn off my guide layer at the bottom, and I turn off my background so that I see all the shapes that are actually there. Then I'm gonna to go to image size and make sure under inches that it's at least eight inches wide by 350 pixels per inch. That's good. But the good news is this, as long as you only built with shape layers, if you had to grow it after the fact, like this was only 72 pixels per inch, all those shape letters would grow perfectly because that's what vectors do. Okay, now I'm just gonna change one more thing. I'm gonna go to canvas size and because we wanna print eight by 10, I'm gonna make the canvas eight by 10 inches, have it grow from the center. And that way it just puts it on a rectangle. And then I'm going to save it. It's going to update. There I can see it updated. Mark it green. That's my working format to come back to and work with. And now I need to save it to put to canvas. So I'm going to say export as with all of that background turned off with no raster layers turned on. I'm going to save it or export it as a PNG. And you'll see how clean that is because we're at pretty high resolution, enough to print on an 8x10. And that's going to go to your downloads, but it's going to keep your name. And I'm going to mark that orange. Keep it on the desktop. Then I go to the exercise. I scroll down to the end of the directions. Put my name uh, that I am called. My last name is registered. And I use this little upload image icon. We'll get very used to this to bring in that PNG. The PNG is a free floating raster image of our vector shapes, then shrink it to fit under my name, which even though it looks like there's white space around it, if I open up that PNG in preview, notice it's free floating on whatever background there is. So this is what we use for logos, for type design, because it will float on any background. It's called supporting transparency. Now these are flat basic shapes. And that's the requirements. But just like I did with the first exercise, there are optional extras to finish it off, to turn this into something more like this. And what's the difference? It's textures, it's drop shadows, it's lighting effects. And they're actually incredibly easy to do. So if we go back to Photopea, all I have to do now is I'll turn on my white background so I can see it clearly. And I can fill that white background now that it's a taller rectangle. I can say edit fill, and do a blanket fill again with white. And lock it. Now I can see uh, where would this benefit from a little bit more nuance 
and one might be like around the yellows of the eyes because eyes are complicated they're a focal point so if i click on those eyes using auto select layer because my guide one is locked it won't select that one i can select one of the eyes and then instead of double clicking on the icon of the layer window where you can pick the color and instead of clicking on the name of the layer where you can rename it i'm going to click off to the side of the layer but still on the layer and that's going to open up what are called layer styles so layer styles are wonderful especially on vectors because anything you do to them will be perfectly clean within the vector and there are a lot you can see them these are the defaults a really basic one is i can add an outline which is very common it's called a stroke um, very common for a vector so i can add an outline i can give it a size and i can give it a color so maybe i want it to be like a darker yellow or even an orange. And then I can choose how many pixels it is, right? And then I can choose, this is why it's a little bit better than doing this as a vector outline. I can choose if the line is on the outside of my shape, on the inside of my shape. I'll zoom in so you can see. So that's on the inside, oh, except I zoomed in on the wrong part. Here we go. This can happen in Photopea a lot when you're using command plus, command minus. If your tools get really big or small, you want to click on the search browser and then zoom and basically get back to a browser window that's 100%. Then if you click on your image, you can zoom in on just the image. So let's try that again. Double click on it. I can move this off to the side. Wish I could make it a little bit smaller, but I, I'm going to play with the stroke. It remembers that I used orange and I'm playing with it on the inside. I can split the difference, put it in the center. So you can see where that blue vector edge is of my shape. And this is how a default outline would work in a vector program. It would only ever center your outline or your stroke if you turned it on. Or I can put it on the outside. So I think I'm going to put it on the, I'll put it on the center and then play with its size and I can play with its opacity. So it can actually overlap with the other shapes. That's kind of nice. And you'll see, this is the only effect I've built. So next, now on that layer, it says EFF for effect. And then a little drop down arrow and I can turn that effect on and off. Sometimes Photopea is a little slow with these things, but it can do it. And then I can hit command S and update the file. I can also add more effects. So what if I want to change the eye so that it has an inner shadow all the way around it? Well, what does that mean? I'm going to pick a color. Yeah, I'll use a dark gray. And I can give it what looks like an interior shadow. Instead of a gray, maybe I pick like an orangish brown to go with the yellow of the eye. I can pick the angle of the shadow like that. And I can play even with how noisy it is, how textured it might look. I want the eyes to look clean, so no noise there. Okay, now you can see under that layer, I have a stroke that can be turned on and off, if Photo P can keep up with me. <laughs> and I have an inner shadow. I can also change the stroke so that its opacity is stronger, or maybe that I just turn it off entirely, and instead of a stroke, I add a drop shadow. And just like the inner shadow, I can play with the drop shadow and all these settings. 
and I can uncheck use a global angle, which allows me to put different angles for each one, right? So if I want this shadow to be another part of the eye, I want to be really soft but really close, I can have it just kind of glow out around the eye. All of this is just on the one layer. Come on. So those are the kind of effects you can play with. And now which eye looks a little bit more engaging? Probably this one, right? I might also decide I want to add a highlight to the eye. So I might take something like this, that white nostril, put it right in the eye. But instead of leaving it white, I'm going to do an outer glow, which is the opposite of an outer shadow. And this outer glow, I can set to be bigger, right? And to spread. So that it has that kind of buzzy effect as well. And then, of course, just like before, if I want to duplicate that, Command-J, you'll see that the duplicate also has the effects. Now, how can I match this onto the yellow of my eye? If you right-click on a layer with effects, you can say, come on, layer style copy you can copy a layer style from one layer and apply it to another layer layer style paste i can try it on the nose what happens if i paste that layer style onto the nose that's fun what about the muzzle paste that layer style onto the muzzle and of course, I can make changes anytime I want. Onto the whiskers. This is going too far, but paste it onto the whisker. Layer style, paste. So that looks weird, right? Because there's a shadow on top of the whisker. So what if I go to that and I can open up that effect? I'm going to save to help photo pee out a little bit. Open up that effect and I can double click on effects. And I can do things like reverse the angle. Oh, but I got to uncheck global light. So you saw what happened there? Oh, cancel it. <laughs> it shifted everything. So if I go to inner shadow just on this whisker and uncheck global light, right, then I can flip the angle. So there's a highlight instead on top of the whisker. I can adjust just all these things. And then if I want to copy that, that layer style, I can apply it to all the other whiskers. It's a little overkill, but it can be done. What you can't do is paste a layer style onto multiple layers. But no, you can! So I just selected those two whiskers, pasted the layer style onto them, worked just fine. How about this? Nostril, this nostril. Hold down shift. Try to select them both. There we go. Layer style, paste. And then, let's flip it. Flip that inner sh shadow. And then let's change the color. It's weird to have orange in your nostrils. And then if I want to match that, I can layer style copy. And if you copy and paste a layer style, it will overwrite what was there before. And if you don't like it, this is my favorite thing about layer styles affecting vectors. You can just turn them off. Or you can just turn off one attribute to them. So keep the drop shadow, but turn off the inner shadow. Or turn off the drop shadow, but keep the inner shadow and 